This week we have two planets shifting directions, Jupiter the Great Benefic and Pluto the Great Transformer. All of this an empowered moment and more in my new intuitive energy forecast for the week of Monday, October 7th through Sunday, October 13th, 2024. Stay tuned. This is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from Sacred Soul Empowerment, here to do your intuitive energy forecast. First of all, you might hear a little bit of echo with uh, the sound quality of this video, and it also is a little dark, <laughs> darker than I would like. And that is because as of this recording for this week's video, um, it's been done previous, of course, to the date. and. We just here in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and forgive me if I forgot any states out there that got hit by Hurricane uh, Helene or Helena. I don't even know how you say that hurricane's name. Um, and I have been since the day of the hurricane out of power and still out of power and haven't been able to uh, do a lot of my work, sessions, classes, etc. And I am just at a alternate location at the moment, just so that I can record this video and take care of a couple of things online. So please forgive me for the video and sound quality, but I wanted to make sure that I got this done because I don't know when my power is coming back on like so many. And I feel very blessed and lucky and fortunate because where I am in South Carolina, although there's a lot of destruction and devastation, um, I am safe, everybody I know is safe, and there wasn't near as much damage as there was in North Carolina. Um, I have a lot of friends actually in North Carolina and they, they definitely went through it and there's uh, a lot going on there still and uh, recoveries that are trying to be made um, and whatnot. So this is what our empowered moment is going to be about. So actually before we uh, get into any of the information for the week astrologically or look at our stones of choice or anything like that, um, let's go ahead and do an empowered moment. So close your eyes, relax your body, and clear your mind of all thoughts. Sit up straight, yet make sure your body's relaxed. Take in a deep breath and exhale if you haven't already. And continue to do so just to relax your body more and more. Visualizing golden white light of source God energy all around you. The healing, the peace, the guidance, the protection. And breathe that in deeply into every cell of your body. As you exhale, let go of all that your body, mind, and soul no longer needs. And calling in silently your angels, guides, master guides, and teachers of the highest vibration of light. But also let's call in for the collective, all of the archangels, ascended masters, ancestors, and healers of the highest vibration of light. And whether you know Reiki or some other healing modality, or you just want to envision projecting that golden white light of healing and protection, let's intend that we're sending healing out to all of those that experienced in any way, shape or form, whether personally or through those that they know and love that might be living in any of these areas. Let's project comfort and peace and healing. Let's send them that golden white light. Let's call in the angels and archangels of the highest vibration of light. Again, the healers, the Reiki masters, all of our ancestors and guides of the highest vibration of light to assist those that are experiencing any turmoil, 
any challenges during the aftermath of this hurricane. So just a few moments of silence to send that loving, healing, light energy. We can expand our scope for just a moment beyond those that were affected by this hurricane because there's things going on all over the world, whether it be in the United States or other countries. These eclipses that we had in September and October were very powerful. So let's send healing light to the collective of humanity to Earth Mother Gaia and to the world. And let's take one last deep healing, cleansing, balancing breath. As you exhale and in your own time, you can open your eyes and return to this time and place and space. And I forgot to show you what card decks we were going to use a little bit later. And of course, since I'm in an alternate location, there were a few things that I forgot to bring. I thought I had everything. But the main message for this weekly reading is going to be coming from Tarot of Dreams. I had to remember what it was called because I forgot to, sh to bring the box. But the Tarot of Dreams by Ciro Marchetti, this is what the deck uh, looks like as far as that goes. The special message card, I did remember the box for that for some reason, the special message card for your stone of choice is going to come from the Wisdom of the Oracle deck by Colette Baron reed And we do have to look at these stones of choice. And I could, um, I did not have the printout of what these special intention pendants have been infused with as far as the energies. Um, because I don't have uh, power to to print that out. So you're going to have to go with your intuition. I'll tell you a little bit about the stone itself, but these are special intention pendants from my website. And the first one is Apple Aura and Purple Aura Quartz. So the Apple Aura Quartz is our heart chakra. It's healing of emotions. It's healing of relationships. It's opening you up to greater self-love. And the top, the purple aura, of course, is crown chakra, opening you up to higher spiritual awareness, um, claircognizance being magnified. And again, if you want the description of the intentions that have been Reiki infused into this, go onto my website, Sacred Soul Empowerment, to the uh, shop link, and you'll find this and the other two that I'm about to show you. So stone number two is pink opal. Now, it's October. My birthday is in October, actually. Um, actually, it's this Tuesday, um, the 8th of October. And opal is a stone for Libra. That's kind of the birthstone of Libra. But now the birthstone for Libra opal, we usually think of as this white creamy looking with maybe some rainbow colors in it. This happens to be a pink opal. Pink is a color for Libra as well. And so this is also heart chakra. The other color for the heart chakra besides that green that we saw in the previous stone is pink. And so this is about self-love, self-compassion, forgiveness of self, as well as the unconditional love, compassion, and forgiveness of others. Um, and again, you could do some research on what some of the other properties of the pink opal are. And the last stone of choice is Indigo Aura Quartz. Isn't that a beautiful one? So Indigo Aura Quartz is the third eye chakra, opening you up to greater vision, your psychic senses, your clairvoyance, even your clairaudience, um, opening and expanding. We could even maybe relate it to the throat chakra and speaking your truth. Um, and this, again, is a very uh, beautiful kind of, again, the, the light here does not do it justice. 
um, but it's a very beautiful stone. So again, your stones of choice for the special message card are the Apple Aura and Purple Aura Quartz. That's wrapped in silver. We've got the Pink Opal wrapped in silver wire. And we've got the Indigo Aura Quartz. This one's wrapped in the gold wire. All right. So let's go ahead and talk about the astrology for the week. There's actually quite a bit going on. Now, last week on October 2nd, we had our new moon solar eclipse. So that was the second of the eclipses, right? It, it um, came two weeks after the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. And I think I mentioned in one of our previous videos that I think a lot of these heavy duty changes from these eclipses even started back uh, a month before when we had a full moon in Aquarius because that was a powerful full moon. So here we are, a lot of shifting and changing and releasing and healing and surrendering and, and needing to have trust and faith is going on. Um, again, whether it be, you know, where you live, your state or country, but all over the world as well. We start out this week on Tuesday the 8th is the first time there's something happening here. And Tuesday the 8th of October, we've got Venus, planet of love and relationships, ruler of the divine feminine archetype. She's in Scorpio right now, and she's in a positive connection to Mars, ruler of the masculine archetype, the warrior planet, energy action forward movement, in water sign Cancer. So they're both in water signs. They are in a positive connection. Venus and Mars are often looked at as far as relationship matters because Venus is love and relationships and Mars is passion and um, motivation. And so this is a positive aspect. Actually, Tuesday the 8th looks like a pretty good day because also um, we've got Mercury, the planet of the mind, thoughts, ideas, communications in Libra. And it's in a positive trine connection to Jupiter, planet of abundance, blessings, and prosperity, and belief systems, and um, looking at the big picture. And <clears throat> then we have Mercury in Libra opposing Chiron, the wounded healer. So this, this last transit, um, all on October 8th, this is the one with Mercury and, and uh, Chiron that could bring up some healing, some issues of past life healing that we're working out with other people. But then opposition doesn't have to be a negative. So this, you know, with the other two being positive connections, Venus to Mars and Mercury to Jupiter, this could actually be a good thing where we're communicating with other people, we're speaking our truths, we're compromising, we're cooperating. And so a lot of healing can take place, but there can be a focus on relationship matters with the Venus and Mars. And of course, again, Mercury is in the partnership relationship sign of Libra. Um, so I think that especially speaking about or communicating our various ideas and beliefs about relationship or what it is that that we desire or need in our lives, especially with that Jupiter being involved, I think that this can be actually a positive thing. Now on Wednesday the 9th, Jupiter actually turns retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini. So even the day before when Mercury connects with Jupiter in a positive way, it's magnified and heightened and intensified because Jupiter's at a standstill and going retrograde on Wednesday. So Jupiter is again about expansion into the big picture, right? What's what's the picture of, of the future? And, and what do we what do we desire to expand into? What do we believe? You know, what's our beliefs? And Gemini, where Jupiter is, is about all the little details. So Jupiter likes the big picture and doesn't focus on the details, but Gemini focuses on all the details and doesn't care about the big picture. So this is an interesting place for Jupiter to be course Jupiter in total will be here for a year it's already been here for a few months and you know this has been I feel like bringing in since it went into Gemini in the spring it's been bringing in a lot of 
Oh, a lot of like mental mind activity. Like our minds are a little all over the place, discombobulated, and we're vacillating in our opinions and vacillating in our thoughts and feeling a little overwhelmed by all the information coming in. That would be Jupiter and Gemini. Now that it's going retrograde, we can maybe reflect a little bit more internally about all of this instead of being maybe affected by the circumstances and situations and relationship aspects of it all on an outer level. Maybe we can now just um, internalize it, look at it. Um, this might cause some anxiety and nervous energy because that's part of what Gemini is about. And since Jupiter magnifies that, that anxiety can now maybe be turned inward. And again, since I'm recording this early, we don't really know, or I don't really know, what's transpired from that uh, new moon solar eclipse quite yet. Um, so there might be things that have happened as I'm even recording this video for this particular week. On Thursday the 10th, we've got Venus again. She's in Scorpio, so she's passionate. She's um, wanting to be in her power, take her power back, own her power. She's mysterious um, and she's very magnetic right now as she's in, in Scorpio. But on Thursday, Venus and Scorpio will be in a difficult in conjunct to Jupiter in Gemini, who just went retrograde the day before, so he's still intensified and magnified in his power. And Venus and Scorpio will also in conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries. So there's going to be some adjustments we have to make, adjustments maybe in relationships, adjustments maybe with our finances and our money because Scorpio where Venus is does rule finances and money or that's one of the things that Scorpio rules and Venus herself does rule money and finances as well our personal resources so there might be adjustments that we're having to to make uh, adjustments maybe in our perspective because of the connection to Jupiter and adjustments within ourselves and how we value ourselves because of the connection to Chiron. On Friday the 11th, we have Mercury, which again rules the mental realm in Libra, sign of partnerships, in that difficult in conjunct, but this time to Uranus. So Uranus is very electrical. Uranus is uh, the higher God mind energy. It opens up our clear cognizance, so we get downloads of information, some aha moments, some revelations. So there may in fact be some revelation energies in relationship matters, relationships of all kinds, um, that really awakens us, maybe shocks us in some way, something out of the blue that comes in that you weren't expecting, communications um, actually uh, from other people and it could be shocking communication that you're having with somebody but also maybe surprise uh, like telephone calls or text messages or emails from people maybe that you haven't heard from in a while on the same day friday the 11th we have pluto the transformer the great transformer turning back to direct motion at 29 degrees of capricorn so Pluto is magnified as well because he's at a standstill or what we call stationary. And when Pluto went retrograde uh, a few months back, it was, you know, into Aquarius and then it retrograded back into that last degree, that 29th degree of Capricorn. Now it's turning back to direct motion at that 29th degree of Capricorn. It will move out of Capricorn um, sometime in November. So this time period of October and through into November is really a major death and rebirth. And I'm gonna give you some Pluto keywords here. Death and rebirth, transformation and regeneration, transition, renewal, um, some big, big changes. Pluto rules big changes on a collective level, but it can be big changes in your life as well as you're going through as well. A death and rebirth from these eclipse energies and some of the other energies that have been happening. Um, but I think that we're probably, whether it's you know, the, the weather related uh, shifts like the hurricane and, and other weather related things around the world happening, whether it's things about, you know, some of the war kind of things or the political stuff, you know, that we're going to have an election coming up in the United States. But again, around the world, there could be some political stuff going on. Pluto rules these big organizations and people that are in more of this kind of energy of power and control. 
And so we might be experiencing um, some of that kind of rising up and magnifying as Pluto's at a standstill and turning direct at this last degree of Capricorn. On Saturday the 12th, Mercury, ruler of the mental realm again in Libra, is now in conjunct Neptune. So on Friday it in conjunct Uranus, on Saturday it in conjuncts Neptune. So again, there's some adjustments we have to make in our perspective. We're not maybe seeing things clearly, things are a little fuzzy, maybe we're wearing rose-colored glasses, maybe we need to be clear in our own communication and reiterate what it is that we really uh, believe or think um, or what it is that we want. On Sunday the 13th, a lot is going on on Sunday the 13th. First we have Mercury in Libra squaring Pluto. So a square is one of the more challenging aspects. Mercury all, already connected to Uranus and Neptune, both outer generational planets. Pluto is that third outer and generational planet. And this time it's a square. So we might have some power and control issues in communication. Um, we might be hugely transforming our thoughts and ideas or what we want in relationships or how we uh, communicate in relationships. Right after Mercury connects with Pluto in this way, it's going to, on the same day, move into Scorpio until November 2nd. So Mercury in Scorpio is uh, much more transformative, very clairsentient, very uh, deep in its perceptions and perspectives. It likes to do research. It likes to understand things on a very deep psychological level. Um, Mercury and Scorpio could be communication regarding, again, money finances, you know, comes up again with that Scorpio energy. Um, so there's, you know, again, so far a lot going on, but also on the 13th, Mars, the warrior planet of energy action and forward movement, which is in Cancer, the sign of home and family, is going to be challenging Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries. We have the sun in Libra, sign of relationships, opposing Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries. And then the sun in Libra finally will make a positive trine to Jupiter in Gemini. And that's all on the 13th. So there's a lot transpiring and going on. Those last three uh, transits uh, with Mars and then the sun connecting to Chiron is suggesting some past life healing, some old stories that maybe we're releasing and letting go. Um, some of it can be in relationship matters. Some of it can be in home and family matters. So maybe things that we learned in the home and family growing up as a child is part of what we're kind of um, moving through to release and let go. And then again, our interpersonal relationships, romantic relationships, friendship relationships, family relationships, and even work relationships. And again, all the while we're gaining again a a different perspective, hopefully a greater perspective, um, sharing more of our truth with, you know, Libra is an air sign, which is about communication, Jupiter and Gemini, Gemini is an air sign about communication. So hopefully with ending that day on Sunday with the sun and a positive connection to Jupiter, we're able to come into some more, uh, again, positive perspectives or ways of communicating with others. So let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides from the Tarot of Dreams. Okay, I shuffled in three cards, like one by one, just kind of fell out really easily. So the first card is the Palace of Coins. This particular tarot deck has four extra cards in it. Typically a tarot deck has 78 cards. This has 82 cards. Um, and it's because they have the palaces in it, the Palace of Coins, the Palace of Cups, the Palace of Swords, the Palace of uh, Wands. And so with the Palace card here, the coins, you know, you can see we've got a big castle in the background, all this lush foliage. Um, we've got mushrooms and deer and flowers and an, even an owl up here in the tree. The coin suit, which is the suit of pentacles or earth, is about the tangible things in life. And like, you know, for instance, your home, your land, your money, your finances, your home, your family. These are like the tangible kind of sort of everyday things that we deal with, uh, projects, you know, work, that kind of thing. So I feel like with the Palace of Coins starting out, this is kind of showing us 
what it is that we desire, where we desire to be or where we desire to move towards is this full and complete picture of feeling secure. To me, the coins is about security, right? If it rules money and finances, it's about security, but more than just financial security. So we want to feel safe and secure where we live. We want to feel safe and secure with our money and finances. We want um, good people around us to call our family. We want all of our everyday needs being met, like our food and our, you know, uh, our work life and, and our, our fun and everything else. This to me is like, like the ultimate of having what it is that you dream of. Um, this is also this can also relate to nature as well that we want peace on earth and and nature to um, you know come back into a state of balance and harmony so there's a lot of ways that you can look at this but look at this as the big picture again that Jupiter sort of influence the big picture of what it is that you desire in your life deers are about gentle energy when it comes to an animal totem owls are about wisdom when it comes to an animal totem, let me see if there's any other animals that I see here. Um, I can't tell if there's a butterfly in here or not. You'd think there would be. Um, but there is definitely a lot of mushrooms there, you know, and I think of sustenance and um, growth, you know, especially with all the, the trees and the grass and the flowers there. So again, ultimately, this is this is what we should be focusing on, intending for, and projecting in through visualization out to the universe or out to Earth Mother Gaia or, you know, out wherever, you know. It's like project that picture, that vision out of what it is that you desire. Now, the next card that came up was the Ace of Swords. So the Ace is about a new beginning. The Suit of Swords is about the mental realm. So this is a new beginning with how we're thinking, how we're perceiving, how we're seeing things, how we believe in things. So new perspectives, just like we were talking about earlier. This is about things maybe becoming crystal clear. We've got this sword kind of reflecting some light. So maybe you're having some crystal clear clarity about something. This particular um, Ace of Swords also has uh, like it almost looks like a warrior because he's wearing a helmet I don't even know if that's a woman or a man but wearing a helmet and then there's like these kind of almost looking like wings here coming out from the throat chakra so speaking your truth is indicated but also some angel wings coming down as well so the ace of swords can be quite it can be curt it can be truthful it can be honest and sometimes in a harsh way but I think here, because of the angel wings here, that we can be truthful and honest in a compassionate way. This is about definitely speaking your truth and not holding back, but we can choose our words in such a way that it's coming across in a kind manner, which is kind of Libra, you know, Mercury, which rules communication, is in Libra, and Libras are the peacemaker. Libra likes um, to kind of put a, a gentle touch on things. You know, they can, if they're pushed, they can be very to the point, but it's typical mode of, of communication and operation is to be kind of this gentle, loving, compassionate energy with Libra. Um, but again, I think that this is about uh, speaking our truth and, you know, bringing forth the appropriate um, ideas that we need to convey to other people. This would also indicate with that helmet that we're getting downloads. I feel like, you know, these eclipses, we're continuing to get downloads of higher information. Activations are coming in. Our claircognizance is increasing. Um, and we might be as, you know, like channeling. So here's something coming in through the crown chakra, and then it's coming out the throat chakra, and we're like channeling certain ideas or perspectives or information to other people. And then the last card is Major Arcana 10. I love that we're ending with this. And this card is the Wheel of Fortune. It's actually in this deck ruled by Jupiter, which is going retrograde this week. But Jupiter is again, the planet of abundance, prosperity, blessings, um, expansion, 
Um, you know, Jupiter has its shadow side like all planets do, which can be about drama and things just being overwhelming and, and you know, just too big or too much or going to excess, you know, with, with anything. Um, but the Wheel of Fortune is a positive card, right? It's, it is definitely saying that the Wheel of Karma, the Wheel of Fate, whatever you want to call it, is turning. There's a shift happening. Um, and again, it's not surprising that this fell out of the deck last with these eclipse energies that we've just gone, gone through, that again, the energies from them are going to continue to unfold or last or show themselves for yet some time to come. And even if it appears challenging, because with change, there's often challenge, you know, um, and a lot of the things that are going on on the planet right now feel overwhelming and challenging. But this is definitely saying that we're headed in, a, in the right direction. Like once we're through all of the stuff that's going on, it's like this is bringing in new opportunities. This is bringing in new blessings. This is bringing in something new that is going to expand our perspective of ourselves and the world and humanity and who we are and what we're here for. Um, it's going to expand us into the next step of our destiny path. Um, this Wheel of Fortune actually is made up of a compass. So what is your true north? What direction do you want to go into? What, you know, what is your true path all about? What is your soul calling you to do? I think that's the direction that you need to move towards and trust and have faith that you are being divinely guided to the next step. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at your special message depending on your stone of choice. So the first stone of choice was the apple aura and purple aura quartz. So special message for apple aura, purple aura, quartz people for this week. This one's calling my attention in the middle. And it says not for you and it has a fortune cookie on there. So I feel like there's something in your life, a situation, a circumstance, maybe a relationship, that it's not for you. It's not your path. There is a new direction. There's something new that's transpiring here, a new direction that you need to go into. The fact that there's a fortune cookie there is a good sign. You know, it reminds me again of Jupiter, the planet of good fortune that rules the wheel of fortune. And so if you open up that fortune cookie, what's the first thing that pops into your head as far as the good fortune that is there? Is it, is it about a new job or career? Is it about new money and finances coming in? Is it about new relationships with people that are loving, supportive, and kind? What, you know, and it could be more than one thing for sure, right? Uh, let's say that fortune cookie has several little pieces of paper in it with, with what your fortune is. But know that this is the direction, this new vision of what it is that you desire, what the fortune is all about. And there's something else that's currently maybe in your life. Um, and it could, it could be just a belief system, a way of thinking or perceiving or believing that's not for you anymore. It doesn't have to be a tangible situation necessarily. So think too about you know, your state of beingness, your emotional and mental health. Maybe there's something that's not for you to hold on to anymore, and it's time to release it and let it go and see what that fortune is all about. Let's put that back in the deck. And then the second stone of choice, <clears throat> excuse me, is the pink opal. So special message for this week for the pink opal people. This one's calling my attention. <gasps> no. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys. I swear. That was in the middle, too, and I shuffled it. Um, so same thing applies. I mean, I feel like I don't need to repeat all of that, right? Um, I'm just noticing for the first time that that is number six. You know, there, there could be some home and family stuff related to this. There could be some old ways of thinking and perceiving and believing that come from the home and family that you grew up in, you know, that it's time to release and let go. So we'll add that little piece onto um, the rest of what we already said for the first stone of choice. And th so this would, all of that would apply to the first two stones. Okay, let's put this back in the deck again. 
it's gonna be really, it, I think it's happened once where the same card came out three times for all three stones of choice, but who knows. All right, so the last stone of choice was the Indigo Aura Quartz. I'm gonna close my eyes. Okay, Indigo Aura Quartz people, special message for this week for the Indigo Aura Quartz. You know, the one that's like, my fingers are touching and I feel like that needs to come out. This one says to be fair, to be fair. You, you might be feeling like something isn't fair, something isn't equal, something isn't just, something isn't balanced. You know, it makes me feel, uh, it makes me feel like the Libra energies, right? Libra is the karmic scales of justice and balance and fairness. So I feel like there's an inequality maybe happening um, maybe you're over compromising and the other side is not, you know, cooper cooperating or compromising that that would be in relationships. But this can also be situational too, where there's something that's been out of balance and it's time to bring those Libra scales back into balance. You want things to be fair and just. And I feel like this is partly, I feel like partly, or for some of you, this is you having to do something, take an action, if you will, to create a rebalancing effect. But I'm also getting that for some of you, that this is just like the eclipse energies, the universal energies that are happening that are just moving you in a particular direction so that there is a rebalancing effect that's happening, whether or not you want that or desire that, you know, you might have been living in a certain state of imbalance for so long, but change is scary and you're not, you know, you're not, you're in a place of uncertainty or being unsure. And so I feel like the universe is also, for some of you, just uh, pushing you, if you will, gently pushing you, we'll say, in a new direction to create more of a balance. She's actually holding the scales, um, if you can see that. Um, and it's almost like lady justice there, you know, and the scales are balanced. And so the scales, whether you're trying or, or not, the scales will be rebalanced in a particular way. All right, everybody, thank you so much for um, hanging in there with me with the sound and video quality. I send you all lots of love and light and a lot of healing energy, again, to all of those anywhere on the planet that are experiencing something difficult or challenging. Um, thank you for your support. Sending lots of blessings. Namaste.